This one is a 600 to 650 level question, uh, easy to medium question, data sufficiency question. Focuses on concepts from arithmetic progression, elementary arithmetic progression concepts. Let's read the question. What is the sixth term of the arithmetic sequence? Before even taking a look at the statements, let's answer these two mandatory questions that we should do for any data sufficiency question. The first one is what kind of an answer will this question get? This question is what is the sixth term of the arithmetic sequence? So the answer to this question is going to be a number. We'll say the sixth term is a 43. We'll say the sixth term is a 91. One number is what is going to be the answer. The second one is a very crucial question. Having clarity for this question, having what this means is very, very crucial to getting any DS question right. And that is, when is the data sufficient? For any what is the value question in data sufficiency, the data is sufficient. If you are able to come up with a unique answer, the value should be unique. If you are able to say that the sixth term is a 43 and it cannot be anything else, either using statement 1 or 2 or together in some fashion, if you are able to come up with a unique answer, then the data is sufficient. If you're saying it could be a 43, it could be a 48, if you're coming up with more than one answer, or you're saying that I have no way of finding out the value, I don't have information to find the value. Either when you cannot find out, or if you find more than one value, the data is not sufficient. So the operative word, the keyword is getting a unique value, right? Having got this clarity, let's move on. Before we delve into the statements, I just want to spend a minute on the concept download for arithmetic progression. Just in case it's a little shaky, right? There are two important formulae that we need to know when solving any arithmetic progression question. The first one is a formula to compute the nth term of the arithmetic progression, which is a n, which is the nth term, equals a1 plus n minus 1 into d. What is an? The nth term. What is a1? The first term. What is n? The number of terms in the sequence. It could be the 10th term, 15th term. What is d? d is the common difference, the difference between any two consecutive terms. So this is the first formula. The second one is a formula to compute the sum of the first n terms of an arithmetic progression. It is basically n, which is the number of terms, into a1 plus a n divided by 2. a1 is the first term, a n is the last term, by 2 into the number of terms. That gives us the value for the sum of the terms. Right? So the first n terms of the arithmetic sequence. Let's keep these two formulae in mind when you're solving this question. What do we have? A statement one. It says the sum of the sixth to the twelfth term of the sequence is 77. Right? What is the formula we said? Sum of the first n terms is equal to a1 plus a n divided by 2 into the number of terms. We're starting from the sixth term, going all the way up to the twelfth term. So the first term for us in this set is going to be the sixth term. The last term is we are going all the way up to the 12th term. So a6 plus a12 divided by 2 into the number of terms. How many terms do we have? If we had counted from 1 all the way up to the 12th term, we would have had 12 terms with us. We are not counting from the first term. We are actually starting from the 6th term and going all the way up to the 12th term. So how many terms are we not counting? We are not counting 5 out of the first 12 terms, which means in a6 to a12, the number of terms that we count is 7. So 7, which is the number of terms, into a6 plus a12 by 2 is equal to the sum of the sequence, which is equal to 77. Divide both sides by 7, so that will leave us with 11 on the right hand side. Cross multiply this, so we will have a6 plus a12 equals a 22, cross multiplying this two. The moment you reach a point, any time in arithmetic progression, where you do not know what to do further, do one thing. Write all of those terms in terms of the first term and the common difference. You will find a way out of it. Right? A6 can be written as A1 plus 5D. A12 can be written as A1 plus 11D. We are using the formula that A1 plus N minus 1 into D. This equals a 22. So A1 plus A1 is a 2A1. 5D plus 11D is a 16D. So 2A1 plus 16D equals 22. Divide the entire equation by 2. So what we will be left with is A1 plus 8d equals 11. a1 plus 8d, a1 plus n minus 1 into d is going to be a n. So this value is nothing but a9. So what do we have from the statement 1? From statement 1, we know the ninth term. What is the question? The question is about finding out the sixth term. From the ninth term, if we subtract three common differences, we'll go to the sixth term. But do we know the common difference from the statement? We do not know. Is the information about common difference given in the question stem? No. So without knowing the common difference and just knowing the ninth term, we will not be able to find out the sixth term. So statement one alone is not sufficient. Statement one alone is not sufficient. We can eliminate few answer choices. Anytime in DS, in GMAT, statement one is not sufficient. Eliminate choices A and D. One alone is sufficient is what statement A is. Each statement is independently sufficient is what D is. If one is not sufficient, both these choices can be removed. So what are we left with? We are left with B or C or E. 
So why am I splitting it? If next step will be evaluating statement two alone. If that is sufficient, we'll go with a B. If that is not sufficient, then we'll combine and check out whether the combined information is sufficient to find the answer. If that is sufficient, we'll go with a C. Otherwise, we'll go with an E. We'll summarize this in a printed form. But before that, I would like to spend a minute on seeing if we can get to this A9 equals 11 without writing all of these things. I'll walk you through that. If that appeals to you, use that method. Otherwise, we'll come back and stick to this. Right? Let's look at the shorter alternative of going about it. Right? For any number, right? how did this entire formula of n into a1 plus an divided by 2 come about? Right? For any number, for any set of numbers, the sum of the numbers is going to be equal to the average of the numbers into the number of numbers. Because we compute averages sum by number, so sum is equal to average into number. When it comes to an arithmetic progression, the middle number is going to be the average because they're equally spaced apart. So you have, let's say, I'm just writing one arithmetic sequence for our convenience. Let's say 1, 3, 5, 7, 9. I can say this is 1 plus 2, 1 plus 4, 1 plus 6, and 1 plus 8. One way of looking at the sequence. Another way of looking at the sequence is this is 5, this is 5 plus 2, this is 5 plus 4, this is 5 minus 2, and this is 5 minus 4. I can anchor it around the middle term. So if I add all of these things, the 4 and 4 will get cancelled, 2 and 2 will get cancelled. So what do we have? We have 5 times 5 that will give us a sum of these numbers. Because we have a 5 plus 5 plus 5 plus 5 plus 5. That's the sum of these 5 numbers, which is nothing but 25. Add it and see. 4 plus 5 is 9, 9 plus 7 is 16, 16 plus 9 is 25. So we'll get the same answer. So the average for an arithmetic progression is a middle term. So essentially, we know that the middle term of the sequence into the number of terms is equal to 77. How many terms did we compute? We computed that there were seven terms to the sequence. So the middle term is the number for which we'll have the answer, which is going to be the 11th term. So what is the middle term for the sixth term to the 12th term? You can actually list them down and find out. A6, A7, A8, A9, A10, A11, A12. So this is the middle term. You have three to the left, three to the right. So the middle term is the ninth term. So the answer that we have is 11 is the value for the ninth term. You don't even have to do what I did here. You can quickly find out the middle term using this shortcut. Pick the whatever is the first term. That's a sixth term. What is the last term? The last term is a 12. So find the sum of these two and divide it by 2. 6 plus 12 by 2 is a 9. So the middle term for the 6th to the 12th term is going to be the ninth term, this value that you're getting. So if you can get to doing this, you don't need to write all of what we wrote there. Quickly summarize this once more. Sum of an arithmetic progression, this formula holds good, but a better way to remember this formula is basically, it is the middle term of the arithmetic progression, the set of terms that you have, into the number of terms is going to be the sum. So we know there were seven terms in the sequence. Six to the twelfth is seven terms. That sum is equal to 77, which means if we divide both sides of the equation by seven, we know the middle term equals 11. Now comes the question of finding out what the middle term is. We are starting with the sixth term, going all the way up to the twelfth term. So the middle term is going to be the middle term of six to the twelfth term. How do you find that? Six plus twelve by two. Pick the first term value. Pick the last, the whatever is the last nth term. So first term is a sixth term. Last term is a twelfth term. Six plus twelve by two will give you what is the ninth, what is the middle term? So six plus twelve by two equals nine. Nine is the middle term. So a ninth term, a nine equals eleven. So we know the ninth term is eleven, and the question is about the sixth term. We know we cannot find out the answer. So this is one shorter alternative once you've understood this method. But if this is a little confusing, go back to what we did in the last slide and proceed with it. So where were we? We realized that we were given the sum to the 6th to the 12th term. We applied this formula and going with the original set. So nth number of terms is 7. A6 plus A12 by 2. This is equal to 77. Dividing both sides by 11, uh, by a 7, we are left with 11 on the left hand side. Cross multiply A22 equals A6 plus A12. We wrote both A6 and A12 in terms of A1 and D. So we got the value of a1 plus 8d equals 11 or a9 equals 11. So this is the traditional approach we did. Look at the shorter approach once more. If you can get a handle on that, you'll save a lot of time. So I actually would recommend that. See if you can grasp it. And if you already know it, wonderful, right? So now we know the ninth term. So we know that statement one is not sufficient. Rule out choices a and d. We are down to b, c or e. Let's move on to evaluating statement two alone. It's exactly the same thing. I'm going to run through the traditional method here. Sum of the second to the tenth term is equal to 108. So we know that sum of the sequence is n into a1 plus an divided by 2. The first term for us is going to be the second term. The last term is the tenth term divided by 2 into the number of terms. In the first ten terms, we are not counting only one term. So it's easy to find the number of terms here, which is 9. So 9 into a2 plus a10 by 2 equals 108. Divide both sides of the equation by a 9. So that will leave us with a 12 on the right hand side. 
cross multiply this so we'll have a2 plus a10 equals a24 as always expand these terms write them in terms of a1 and d so a2 is an a1 plus d a10 is an a1 plus 9d this equals a24 so we have 2a1 plus d plus 9d is a 10d this equals 24 divide the entire equation by 2 so we'll be left with a1 plus 5d equals 12 what is a1 plus 5d a1 plus 5d is nothing but a6 so we got the value of a6 to be equal to 12 which is what we need to find out so second statement has given us an answer so statement 2 alone is sufficient pause the video at this point you know that it is sufficient we have done this question right now go back and if you want either watch the second method the shorter alternative once more and apply it here and get conversant and see whether it is possible here right once you got I mean, once you get a good handle of it, come back to the question. We'll sign up, sign it up with the answer choices, right? Statement two alone is sufficient. Let's check out if we can find out answers from this. Can we narrow down answer choices? At the end of evaluating statement one, we realized A and D were ruled out because statement one was not sufficient. And then we were left with choices B, C, or E. If two alone is sufficient, we said we'll go with B. Two alone is sufficient. So choice B is the answer. Rule out choices C and D. We'll summarize it in a printed form. Basically, sum is equal to number of terms into first term plus last term by 2. Divide both sides by a 9. That will leave us with a 12. Cross multiply. So we get a2 plus a10 equals 24. Writing in terms of a1 and d, we got a6 to be equal to 12. We got the answer using statement 2 alone. Statement 2 alone is sufficient. Rule out choices c and d. Our correct answer is choice b. Right. Before you leave, do three things. One, sign up as a trial user for GMAT online course, Visa course GMAT online course at wzko.in slash core. Get started with statistics and average. Get momentum to your GMAT preparation. Pay and convert it into a paid user to get access to the remaining topics. Two other things that you can do. One, subscribe to this channel, youtube.com slash Visaco and turn on notification. Lastly, there is one other thing that you can do. You can join as a member of this channel, which is different from subscribing to this channel. There's a small monthly fee to pay to join as a member. You get some member-only perks which are not available for all subscribers. Click on the join button. Even before you pay, you'll get a listing of the member-only perks. Those member-only perks will help give a boost to your GMAT preparation. Best wishes.